Hello there and welcome, this is Bob Proctor. I want to talk to you for a moment about strategies for altering paradigms. Do you know, a paradigm can cause us enormous problems because it's causing our results and if the results aren't what we want and we don't understand that those results are really being motivated by paradigms, we may never change the results and most people go through their life and they never do change the results. They try and change everything under the sun, but they don't realize if they want to change the results, they have to change themselves. If they're going to change themselves, what part of themselves do they have to change? They have to change their subconscious conditioning. That's what they have to change. That is the paradigm. Paradigm is nothing but a group of habits that are programmed into the subconscious mind that control our behavior. Now think of this. Your behavior causes your results. If you want to change the results, don't look outside of yourself. Don't say it's the economy, it's the boss, it's my spouse, it's none of those things. It's something inside and it's called a paradigm. How do you change it? Well, first of all, you start out with the result you want to change. Let's say you want to get up on time, you're always sleeping in. That's a very simple result a lot of people have a problem with. How do we do that? Well, we take a look at what causes us to sleep in. It's an idea in our subconscious mind that just keeps us hitting snooze, staying in bed, not getting out of bed. So I say, I want to change that result. Well, write out exactly the negative result that you're getting. I'm forever sleeping in. I'm always late. I never get up. I hit snooze when I set an alarm. Write that out. Then ask yourself, what is the polar opposite to that? And write it out in the present tense as an affirmation. I am so happy and grateful now that when I wake up, I get up. That's it. I am so happy and grateful now that when I wake up, I get up. And you write that out a hundred times a day. I know your intellect logic is going to tell you this is silly. It won't work. Well, you try it. Write out a hundred times a day. I'm so happy and grateful now that when I wake up, I get up. And write that a hundred times a day for about 30 days. I'll guarantee you, you'll hit quit in the snooze button. You know what you've done? You've programmed a new idea in your mind and it takes over. The old idea dies for a lack of nourishment. You're not feeding it any longer. See, the old idea was a habit. You were in the habit of boom, hit the snooze button, stay in bed, go back to sleep. And what you've done is you've programmed in a new habit that's essentially the opposite to the old. The old dies for a lack of nourishment because you've kept feeding the new one and write it out 100 times a day, present tense. I'm so happy and grateful now that when I wake up, I get up. And mentally see yourself. The second you wake up, your feet hit the deck, you stand up, you're out of bed, and then you stay out of bed. You give that a whirl. If it works for that, it'll work for everything. It'll work in sales. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm in front of a real life prospect before 9 a.m. asking them to buy just the opposite to what's the other one. I'm not in front of prospects at all. I'm afraid to close a sale. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm in front of a prospect before 9 a.m. and I ask every prospect to buy. To change a habit. Change the idea that's fixed in your mind. Through repetition of writing, you fix the idea. Repetition is the first law of learning. You try that, some simple little thing but it works like unadulterated magic. Give it a whirl. Check us out at ProctorGallagherInstitute.com for tips, tools, and resources. Good morning, everyone. And this is one of the reasons why this 5am exists, because I was oh, actually yeah. on Bob Proctor's program and he gave me the same advice. Good morning, Inka. Good morning, Sarah Jeannie. Good, good, good morning. Happy birthday. Good morning. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Happy for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> Have birthday for the whole year. Yay. We are born like we are born every day. Yes, good morning.
Good morning. Good morning. This morning session is going to be for practice and around paradigms. We'll start off with Qigong first and wake our bodies up. Ready to hear it? Ready to change those paradigms? Are you willing and able? A short seven minutes. <coughs> The morning is an interesting time of day, wouldn't you say? We need to transition from sleep to getting ready for the day of action and activity and thoughts and doing stuff. This in Qigong practice is yang energy. Now in Qigong they say give yourself a lightning flash of vitality each and every morning. Now this might be a cup of coffee for you, that gives you a lightning flash of vitality, but something even better, more sustainable without that caffeine crash is an ancient practice called Qigong. Hi, I'm Lee Holden, and I've been teaching Qigong for over 30 years. It's a wonderful practice of mind-body fitness. It's designed to charge you up, get you clear and focused. It's a moving meditation that cultivates energy. You see, Qi means life force energy, and Gong means skill at working with that life force energy. So waking up with a lightning flash of vitality is a very skillful way of using energy. Let me give you three exercises that help to wake you up each and every morning with that lightning flash of vitality. Are you ready? Three simple exercises. Try it for yourself and notice how you feel. First, notice how your body feels before we start. Just take a little inventory. How does your body feel? What's your breathing like? What's the state of your mind? All right. Got it? Just a quick check-in. Now, let's start off with some key pressure points. What I want you to do is do a little exercise called knocking on the door of life. The door of life is right here. It's by your kidneys. And on top of your kidneys is the adrenal glands. And when you drink coffee, you stimulate the adrenal glands. So we're going to knock. We're just going to go like this. You can lean forward a little bit and just go up and down the lower back area. And often when we sleep, the low back, it's a little tight, neck and shoulders get tight, the energy is uh, sluggish. So we wake it up with a little chi massage. Take a nice deep breath. Knock as hard as you can comfortably, tapping up and down the lower back area. You can lean forward if that helps. And then come back up. And then a pressure point right here on your belly. This is called the C of chi. It's right below your navel. And so what I'm going to do is knock on this point like this. Not out to the sides, but right on the point with both hands. And I want you to knock as hard as you can comfortably. So you're knocking vigorously to wake up the energy, but it's still comfortable. This is also good for your metabolism and your digestion. The sea of chi. Knock right here. Take a nice deep breath. And then one more pressure point right here in the center of your chest. Good for emotional balance. It helps you clear stress before the day even gets started. Sometimes we wake up stressed out. So I want you to start off the day charged up and clear in your heart center with your emotions connected to what you want to create. Take a deep breath here. Relax. Now, notice how your body feels now after you activated those three key pressure points for energy and vitality. Feel a little buzzing and tingling? All right. Now, bend your knees, turn from your hips and your waist. Let your arms knock across your lower back and your lower abdomen. Let's knock on the door of life. And we bring a little invigoration into the spine. You see, when you sleep, the joints get a little stiffer. So when you rotate your body this way, it helps to release tension tightness in the back, and you're knocking again across the door of life, across the lower abdomen to wake up those key pressure points for energy and vitality. Nice deep breath. Good, turn and look behind yourself. Just get a little stretch through the spine. 
and then gradually slow it down. Very gradually slow it down. Good. Now, we also want to start the day focused and clear. So here's what I want you to do. Take your right hand under your belly and the left hand is going to circle around and we're going to get centered. That's the name of this exercise. What do I want to create today? What kind of energy do I need to have my best day? And I want you to gather that energy. Inhale and exhale down the midline of the body. And inhale and exhale down the midline. And these movements here are slow and they're done with fluidity and relaxation. They're called flows. Inhale and we connect mind and body. Focused, clear mind tapped into the energy and the resources that we need. Inhale and exhale. Deep breath. Exhale. One more time. And bring your hands down to your sides. Notice that calm, clear, elevated energy flowing through your mind and body. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. If you like that, click the link below. Sign up for my free two-week pass to my video class subscription. You're gonna get a morning and an evening workout in that video class subscription. You can check it out. They're about 20 or 30 minutes long. There's more exercises just like this to charge you up in the morning and give you that lightning flash of vitality. Now, if you like these exercises, click the subscribe button, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the station so that you get more videos just like this. All right, I'll see you in the video class subscription. Thanks so much. So hi, I'm Yinka from Hear My Voice Book Club, which is inspirational self-development books. And just a quick reminder of what we've got on this week. We've got the Friday, um, 5 a.m. Club Monday to Friday, transformational stories tonight. That's for the authors and journal and writing sessions. We've got Michael on Thursday joining us, children's meditation Friday, Saturday, insanity and Joe Dispenser. Uh, Sunday, Qigong and our office and journal and session again. Uh, Michael Rice from Why Is This Happening to Me Again will be joining us at 8 30 this Thursday to take us through another chapter. Our next online monthly book club is 16 Seconds Debunking the Myths Surrounding Manifestation, and it's Thursday, the 4th of April. and Pam and Sandra will be attending those sessions. They just won't be attending the 5 a.m. part. <laughs> a bit too early for them. But we'll come for the lunchtime and the 30 session. And then we're also going to do the same one for the in-person book club in Deansgate in Waterstones, Manchester on the 11th of April. And for those that uh, join us for Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, you will need to read chapter five by Thursday the 18th of April to join that session and I've done the homework. WhatsApp groups keeping people connected. I'm going to go into listening to Brock because it's time to wake up to your results and look, taking a look at those paradigms and then you'll need a pen and paper afterwards because we're going to take notice of those results that you're, um, you're having and the ones that you want to have. Enjoy. I, um, I started to study this information um, 54 years ago. In fact, last October, I started my 55th year of studying this. Now, that's longer than probably many of you are living, maybe longer than your parents have been living. But I've studied it every day. I've become absolutely fascinated with this information. And as I go through this, I think you're going to be fascinated with it. Now, I didn't always have this information. Today, I have a company that operates all over the world. I earn millions of dollars. I have some wonderful friends. And I live an interesting life. When I wake up in the morning, I know that I'm going to be doing what I love all day long, and I'm going to be extremely well paid for it. But you know, it wasn't always like that. I have to go back to 1961. 
And in 1961, a man gave me this book. And that's when everything in my life started to change. The book is Think and Grow Rich. And there was a huge shift in the direction of my life. Now, I'm not going to be on here long, maybe, I don't know, an hour. But in that hour, I'm going to suggest that you could change everything in your life. You see, today can be the turning point in your life by making a simple decision. But if you don't make decisions, you're going to stay right where you are. We have to make decisions. If we're going to change, um, we have to change the direction that we're going. And... When we change the direction we're going, um, then we want to make sure we're going in the right direction. Because if we're not, um, we're going to either go backwards or we're going to stay where we are. Now, I, um, I had something pretty interesting happen. When I committed to study this material every day and, and follow proven direction, uh, the change that took place was enormous. And you know, it can be for you. Now, there's one thing that you absolutely require if you're going to make a big change, and that's discipline. See, without discipline, nothing happens. Now, I found that discipline is the ability to give ourselves a command and then follow it. Now, I'm going to suggest as we go through this, and I, um, I suggest you make some decisions. Don't look at somebody else and say, what are you going to do? To see, what they're going to do has absolutely nothing to do with where you're going. It's what are you going to do. That's what really makes the difference. Now, I've worked with tens of thousands of people all over the world, and I've watched some absolutely phenomenal changes take place. I've watched kids go from a C and D average to a, an honors mark almost overnight. I, um, I would have difficulty counting all the people that have gone from ordinary incomes to multi-million dollars. You see, earning money is not difficult. It's just that hardly anyone knows how to do it. And for good reason. We can go right to our school system and no one ever teaches us how to earn money. And for good reason, they don't know how to earn money. Now, is earning money all this is about? Absolutely not. This is about living the way you want to live. Now, I've been traveling all over the world I, I started to study this, and a uh, great change took place, and then I want to know why I changed. And so I started to study it from a different perspective. I want to know what happened to me, which I'll talk again about in a moment. And so I began to study, and then when I figured it out, got the dots to connect, all I wanted to do was share it with other people. And everywhere I've gone uh, around the world, I have found that people are essentially the same. Now, I've worked in China, I've worked in South America, I've worked in Australia, New Zealand, all over Asia, um, across all over North America, and certainly all over uh, Europe. And uh, you know, people are essentially the same, doesn't matter where you go. I don't care if you're in Shanghai, in Kosovo, or in New York City. I have found that there's three things. You know, frequently after a seminar, I'll sit around and I'll chat with some of the people, uh, maybe that were late leaving the room, and I'll call them aside and I'll say, what do you really want? And I found that not everybody wants to be really wealthy. But what they do want, they want to eliminate any financial concerns. In other words, if they want to get a new car, they want to be able to get it. If they want to take a trip, they want to be able to take the trip. Or if they see a sweater or a dress or a suit they'd like, they want to be able to buy it. They don't want to be wondering, am I going to have enough to pay the mortgage? They want to eliminate financial concerns. The second thing they want is they want to wake up in the morning and be excited about how they're going to spend their day. See, a lot of people are tied up in traffic, going to a job they don't like, working for somebody that is possibly even incompetent. Um, you've got to spend your days doing what you absolutely love to do. And the third thing, they want to mix with people who were really upbeat, who are enthusiastic, people that are getting becoming very creatively productive. Now, that is a pretty good way to live. You don't have any financial concerns. You spend your days doing what you love with people who are upbeat and creatively productive. That's a good way to live. That's the way I live today. But it wasn't always like that. No, it sure wasn't. I had a man sit down with me, and uh, he did essentially what I'm going to do with you right now. 
He said, Bob, I want you to take a look at the results you're getting in your life. Really take a look at the results. And then he got me to think. He said, how do results happen, Bob? How do they actually happen? And I didn't know. He says, do, do results just happen? Well, of course, results don't just happen. And this is where this is where man approached me back in 1961. He, uh, he said, I want to magnify the results that you're getting in your life. Really take a close look at it. Because he said, people are just falling short in a couple of areas. And he pointed out that we're only limited by weakness of attention and poverty, poverty of imagination. In other words, we've got to stay focused and we've got to use our imagination to build the kind of world we really want. Now, I think that's what you want to do. That's what I want to do. I don't think you were looking for something to do when you sat down to watch this. You see, I believe that you do want to improve the quality of your life. And a man named Ray Stanford sat down with me a long time ago, in 1961, and he put an R on a sheet of paper. And then he put an H. He said, Bob, that's happiness. He said, that represents health. And that represents wealth. Now, he said, I want you to look at those three areas of your life. Are you getting what you want to get? Are you doing what you want to do? He said, I'm going to tell you something about results. Results always tell the truth. By their fruits, you'll know them. Results always tell the truth. You can kid yourself all over the place if you want but look at the results. I have people, they'll tell me how much they know about this or about that. Take a look at the results. The results tell the truth. If you're playing golf, the scorecard, the scorecard tells the truth. You see? Now think. Your bank account tells the truth. Your sales sell tell the truth. Your position in life, the health of your body. And he looked at all these areas and he said, do you think I'm a healthy guy? And I said, yeah, you seem pretty healthy to me. He said, have you ever seen me sick? And I said, no. He said, have you ever seen me broke? No. You think I'm a happy guy? And I said, yeah. I mean, this he was a healthy guy, happy. Always had a roll of money on him. Well, he said, you know something? You're the one of the most miserable people I've ever met. And I was. And he said, you're always sick. And he said, you're always broke. Now, he was being kind. I... Uh, was earning $4,000 a year at the time. But look at this. I owed $6,000. That is not a good position to be in. You see, if I had taken every cent I earned for 18 months and paid debts, I would have just broken even. It was an impossible situation. He said, Bob, why don't you change your results? Do you know something? I don't, honestly don't believe that that ever entered my mind. I really don't. You say, well, I must have. No, I don't think it did. I think I got up in the morning and I just went to work. I did whatever I was doing and hoping things would get better. But never sitting down and talking to someone that really knew how to make it happen. If you want to fly a plane, you don't go to a barber and ask them, how do you get the plane off the ground? If you want to um, learn how to dance, you don't go to a mechanic. You go to a damn good dancer. It doesn't matter what you want to do. If you're going to do something, go to someone who has demonstrated people. Now, this guy had demonstrated he was happy, he was healthy, and he was wealthy. And he said, do you ever read anything? And I said, no, I can't read. Now, that wasn't true. I could, not well, but I could. And that's when he introduced me to this book, Think and Grow Rich. And he said, Bob, if you do exactly what I tell you and you study this book and do exactly what the author tells you, he said, everything in your life will change. Now, he said, the man that wrote this book, Napoleon Hill, spent his whole life putting this together. It contains the best thinking of over 500 of the world's most successful people. Listen, I've been reading this one now since 1961. Now, think about that. That's a long time. He said he spent his whole life writing this. He said, I think it would be a very prudent move on your part if you spent your life trying to understand and apply it. Now, I don't know why 
But I decided I would. Now let me explain where I was starting from. I told you I was earning $4,000 and I owed six. See? I had two months high school. Two months high school. That was my formal education. I had never had a half-decent job. I just bounced from one job to another, in the bar, working in a bar, uh, in the Navy, out of the Navy, working in factories. I had never had a half-decent job. Now, I had every reason why I couldn't win. He said, Bob, there are reasons why you can't. You've got to quit thinking of those. You've got to start thinking of how you can. He said, do exactly what I tell you. And so, you know something? I decided I would. One year later, I was earning $175,000. My life changed like night and day. You say, well, what were you doing? I was cleaning offices. And then I took it over a million dollars. I started cleaning one office. I would do anything honest to earn money. I was earning about $100 a week. And I got an office to clean where I would wash the floor twice a month and I got $30. Then I got another office, $65 a month. Kirby's Construction. Now I'm up to an extra 100 a month. Do you know in less than five years I was cleaning offices in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, and London, England. Went right through the roof. Now if you had asked me what I was doing, I couldn't tell you. I would say I'm cleaning offices. I'm reading Think and Grow Rich. But you know, a lot of people were cleaning offices. They weren't doing what I was doing. A lot of people had read Think and Grow Rich. They weren't doing what I was doing. Now, I was trying to figure out how the heck did this happen? See, I had been raised to believe if you're going to earn a lot of money, you're going to be really smart. Well, I knew I wasn't that smart, but I was earning a lot of money. I was raised to believe if you're going to have a good job, you have to have a good formal education. I didn't have a good formal education. I didn't have a good job. I owned the whole company. And so I started to study, you see. I thought, I'm believing in lies. You don't have to be smart to earn a lot of money. There's people that are functionally illiterate. They can neither read nor write, and they're earning millions of dollars. There's people heading up large corporations that have never been inside a school. Now this is, I'm not anti-school. I've made sure all my kids went through school. I just changed the question. I didn't ask them if they were going to go. I asked them where they were going to go. I'm mentioning this. Because I believe anyone can do anything if they can sit down and write it out on a piece of paper and then work at changing what's going on inside. See, in 1990, um, uh, Joel Barker wrote a book. It's called Paradigms. He said, to be able to shape your future, you have to be willing and able to change your paradigm. Now, I had no idea what a paradigm was. And you might ask yourself, do you really know what a paradigm is? Do you understand how the mind works? Because the paradigm has something to do with the mind. I knew nothing about it. But the man that encouraged me to study this put me on a track where I just kept going from one great mentor to another. I was living in Chicago at the time, and I heard about a man in Vancouver. I was trying to figure out why I changed. I had left my own business. I went to work with Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant in Chicago. Ended up being their vice president of sales. I would have gone there. I would have paid them to let me work there. I wanted to work with Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant because I wanted to study. I wanted to know why did I change. I knew I wasn't lucky. And I heard about a man in Vancouver. Somebody said, Bob, you should go and listen to him. So I got on a plane and I flew out to Vancouver. At the end of the seminar, I, when the guy got on the stage, I knew that he knew what he was talking about. There was just such certainty in his talk. And so at the end of the seminar, I said, I would like to, uh, I would like to sit down with you for a couple hours. But he said, you know, I'd like to probably sit down with you for a couple hours. But he looked at his watch. He said, i got to get out of here. And I said, i got to go now, too. I, I, you know, I, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going back to Chicago. He said, what are you doing out here? I said, I come out to hear you speak. Now, I think he was impressed that I had traveled so far to listen to him. So I said, look, and I'm not going to be in Chicago any time in the near future, but I'm going to be in Toronto. And I said, I'm from Toronto. I'll fly over. I'll meet you over there. And so the two of us sat down in the Skyline Hotel. And we were there. We were supposed to be two, three hours. We were there for about three days. And he and I were as thick as thieves right up until he died. 
Now, he introduced me to this idea that I'm going to introduce you to. And what I'm going to show you is, without question, the most powerful idea I have ever learned. And if you don't understand this, the odds of you making great changes are very, very slim. I want you to look at the mind and then look at paradigms. But let's personalize it. Let's look at your mind and your paradigm. Now, let that drawing represent your mind. That, by the way, is the most valuable concept I have ever learned. There's the conscious mind, the subconscious, and the body. Okay? Now, the conscious mind is the thinking mind. Do you know that the average person does not think? Do you know that thinking is a subject that's not taught in school? You say everybody thinks. Hardly anyone thinks. I remember old Nightingale used to say, if the average person said what they were thinking, they would be speechless. Do you know what we do? We confuse mental activity with thinking. That's not thinking. Listen to what most people are saying. They'd never say what they're saying if they were thinking. Watch their behavior. They'd never do what they were doing if they were thinking. Back in 1981, I picked up a paper from a Dr. Lawrence Rampel. Listen to what he said. Thinking is a skill which can be learned just as we learn skills such as typing and playing the piano. Few public school, schools offer courses devoted expressly to teaching thinking. Rather, we are expected to learn and teach thinking as a byproduct of learning mathematics, reading, history, science, a trade, and so forth. And we do learn a lot about thinking in that way. The trouble is we learn our thinking skills in bits and pieces. And we never put it together as an overall picture. If asked to describe what all is required in order to think effectively, most of us would be at a loss to give a complete account. Thus, we are unable to assess our own thinking skills or systematically teach the skill of thinking to others. Well, it's with your conscious mind you think. This is also what we call the educated mind. And I'm going to come back to that because I'm going to show you just how far off track we get with that. Now, this is where our intellect is resident. And it's the intellectual factors that give you the ability to be the creative ability. You say you're created in God's image? Well, that's where the creative faculty comes in. In our intellectual factors, you have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. Now, the subconscious mind is quite different from the conscious mind. That's what we call the emotional mind. See, the conscious mind can think, so therefore you have the ability to choose. You literally choose where you're going. Now, the choice may be unconscious, but it is a choice. You have the ability here to accept or reject information. When we see something come on the news about the economy, the economy's taking a dive, say, maybe for them or you, but not for me. You've got the ability to reject information. Somebody starts to tell you a bad story, reject it. Now think. You have the ability to accept or reject it in your conscious mind. You have the ability to originate ideas in your conscious mind. You can originate any idea you want. Now your subconscious mind has no ability to reject. It must accept. And here's something else. Whatever's placed in the subconscious mind is going to dictate your world. It really will. And your imagination or your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what you imagine and what's real. So if you imagine something happening and you get emotionally involved, it's actually starting to happen. You may say, well, that's ridiculous. Well, the Wright brothers didn't think so. Ed Hillary didn't think so. Steve Jobs didn't think so. Think about it. Thomas Edison didn't think so. Alexander Graham Bell. See, we listen to them and think, well, they're different. No, they're not different. They're exactly the same as you and me. Now look here for a moment. I've given you the basics about the mind. Now let's look at this. Today, you're being inundated with information in your conscious mind from radio, from other people, from TV, from newspapers. And you have the ability, because you have a reasoning factor, you have the ability to think. And you can say, I don't want that information. I'm not accepting that. And you can cause it to go away. But you know something? We don't do that. Not only don't we not do that, we don't even think about it. We don't even think. Why? We leave our mind wide open. And it goes right in. What do we say about the subconscious? It has no ability to reject. It must accept. Why do we do that? because we're programmed to do it. That's why we do it. That's our paradigm. How did that happen? 
How did it happen that we go around leaving our subconscious mind wide open? Because it's what's going on in the subconscious that dictates what you do. Well, let's look at it for a minute. Let's close the window here and open it over here. Now, I'm hoping you're paying attention to this because this could be worth millions to you. It can cause you to live in a healthier body. It can cause you to build your business. See, this is you as an infant. Not today. This is you as an infant. And what's going on? Whatever's happening around you goes right into your subconscious mind. And it just keeps going in over and over and over. See, you're programmed genetically. That's why you look like your relatives. There's a little particle of energy from mom and a little particle of energy from dad came together. And that was the nucleus of you. And 280 days later, you made your debut on the planet. But you have all that DNA, moms and dads, going back for generations. You're genetically programmed. Many of your beliefs have just been passed from one generation to the next. And many of them are absolutely ridiculous. Well, you see, your self-image is formed when you're in your little life. When you don't even have the ability to think. Now, self-image is just one idea. A multitude of ideas are a paradigm. Look at the people we're surrounded by. You know, uh, Robert uh, Heinlein said, in absence of clearly defined goals, we become strongly, strangely loyal to performing daily trivia until ultimately we become enslaved by it. Now think about that. In absence of clearly defined goals, we become strangely loyal to performing daily trivia until ultimately we become enslaved by it. Now think of the number of people that you know that are enslaved to daily trivia. They talk about nothing. They never accomplish anything. They get the same results. If they're short money now, they were short a year ago. They were short a year before that. They're forever getting a car on payment. The idea of going right in a check is just out of their mind. Why? Well, you see, that's probably what the people were doing that we surrounded by as we were little kids. And the ideas that just keep going in over and over and over again form the paradigm. A paradigm is nothing but a multitude of ideas that are fixed in the subconscious mind. And so here we are, as hard as it is to believe, 20, 30, 50, 60 years later, living exactly the same as we were programmed when we were little kids. Do you know that most people on welfare are fourth, fifth generation welfare recipients? It's rather strange. Now, what do we do? Well, we leave this situation and we go to school. What does school do? Well, let's look at it. School gave us valuable knowledge. However, school never taught us anything about paradigms. Therefore, we frequently do not do what we already know how to do. Now think, superior knowledge. Think about it. Inferior results. What does that do? That causes confusion and frustration. Now think about this for a moment. We've gathered great knowledge, but we know nothing about the paradigm. So watch here. Here's the drawing. There's the model. There's all the knowledge we got in school. We've got it packed in there. But you know something? It doesn't equate to the results we're getting. You're going to find absolutely brilliant people getting very bad results. You're going to find people that are brilliant. They know exactly what to do, but they don't do it. Why? It's the paradigm that controls the behavior. Now listen, I've studied this for over half a century. I have no formal education. I have no business experience. I earn millions of dollars. I'm 81 years old. I've got more energy than most people that are 21. I have a sister-in-law that says he's 81, he looks about 60, and he's actually like about 30. Well, she got that down pretty good because that's just about the way it is. Why? It's because I understand how to use the mind. Now, look, at, if you want to change your results, if you really want to change the results, there's something that you've got to do. You've got to know how to change the paradigm. And if you don't change the paradigm, I don't care what, nothing's going to happen. You find people going back to school because they think if I've got some more knowledge, no, no, you're not short on knowledge. So you're not short on knowledge, you just need to change that paradigm. Have you got your pens and paper ready? I am. Um... Oh, yeah. So choose that one area of your life you want to change and what have been the results you have been getting. So what are those results you've been getting in that one area that you want to change?
I'm going to choose one today because obviously we're due to time. And then just jot that down. Yes, I can, Camilla. If you just put it in the WhatsApp group, it will remind me to do it. I'm just going to play some music while you write that, choose that area. And what are the results? The gift, write down the results you're getting exactly as they are. Now take a look at what are the paradigms causing that result. So what is the paradigm causing the result?
It's really going to do so. What are those paradigms? What are the thinking, thoughts, actions that are causing that result? So we're going to do some shoulder rolls because we want to loosen up the body after writing all that. We want to create that change, changing those paradigms requires a shift in the body too. It's a nice deep breath in, draw up the shoulders all the way to the ears, breathe in through the nose, big exhale through the mouth as you bring your shoulders back and down. Nice deep breath in. 
and exhale. One more time, nice deep breath in. And exhale. No question, what results do you want? And then write it out. I'm so happy and grateful now that I and write that out as often and as many times as you can in the time that you've got. So what is the result you want? And write it out as I am so happy and grateful now that. So like Bob was saying in the first video, if you want to start getting up early in the morning or whatever it is, I'm so happy and grateful now that I wake up at 5 a.m., whatever it is for you, revitalized and energetic. So what results do you want? And write it out as I am so happy and grateful now that.
So if you remember to write that out a hundred times, so it's in your own time. And if you really want to go for it, write it out with your less, less dominant hand. So once you've done it a hundred times with your right hand, to try it out with your less dominant hand. And I will be bringing back to you is thinking into the result with Bob Proctor at the 5am club. And I will also be bringing some evening sessions for those that can't join the 5am club as well. So we have a meditation to finish with, but does anyone have anything they want to share or take away from that? that? Did anything come up that you noticed? that you want to share? You can just raise your hands. Okay, I just wanted to tell you thank you and everybody, thank you. Uh, I'm just reflecting back on all the positive changes that have come as a result of me being a part of this. And uh, I owe you my thanks greatly, Miss. Thank you. And I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you, Inka. You are amazing. I'm so happy, so happy and grateful to be part of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm always pumped after Bob Proctor. He's really amazing. I'm looking forward to restarting it. So am I. Hi, Inka. Hi, Sarah JD. I've been away for such a long time. Yeah. Many things have happened to me, going through lots of changes and not being in a permanent uh, residence, you know, makes a lot of difference. But um, I just said to myself, I must find the time today, especially, I don't know, something said to me, just sit for this. And I found the time to come back home. And uh, I feel like I've never never left, uh, left this group. <laughs> it's just... Bring me, bring me back memories of all that we used to do. Thank you, Inka. Awesome. Thank the you. Same, the same feeling I'm getting of what I used to do before with you and all the other lovely ladies and some gentlemen. Thank you, Inka. Thank you. Maybe Welcome there's something back, in your Sarah Gina. Yeah. Maybe Thank something you. in your paradigm that needs change in Sarah Gina. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, you, you, I'm, I'm up and, and flying high and then there I am on the floor <laughs> and then it's up again and that's life actually for me, you know, there are days and there are moments and that's the cycle of my life, mm -hmm. the impermanence of life and just swimming through the every hurdle, there are good days and, you know. It's a, it's 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 a life. My that's my life experience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll just remember we can we can change those life experiences. Yes, yes, yes. I, I mm -hmm. keep changing it, keep changing it, and the subconscious. How much I've multiplied through my years of you know conditioning mm -hmm. of the mind. So it just arises, and it's when I fall, and then I'm up and doing well. And then, you know, it's Dr. Joe's meditation time when I say, you know, this arises as it's change. Mm. Yeah, mm. All this practice that we do, I do, I keep doing. So I know every time it arises, how many births are taken to go through this. How many births? And I'm aware of all this now. That is the biggest gift I'm giving to myself. Yeah. And to all the times I, I spent meditation with you and Bob Proctor and Michael Rice. It's all in me, in me. So every moment I've not lost it. Well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And it's lovely to see you. I know. It's so nice to see you all. I, I mean, every day you all are in my mind, on my mind, you know, every time. But I cannot find the time. I'm out and I'm just moving. I just came back. I mean, I'm down with the bad flu. I've recovered now. And uh, I said, today I must sit down. I came back home and, and uh, yeah. universe gave me this moment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share before I go to meditation?
I just want to say thank you. And I'm so glad that I get to spend um, one hour of my day with great people. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, thanks, guys. For, thanks, Yinka. Thanks, everyone, for keeping me motivated and getting me up every every day at five o'clock. I'm sorry, I've still got a sore throat. Um, so, yeah, so thank you. Even, even on my darkest mornings where I'm like, oh, no, and I've not been feeling 100%, but you've still got me up. Thanks. Be grateful. Thank you. And you all get me up in the morning because there is no way. I'd do this otherwise. <laughs> so you all get yourselves comfortable, ready for the meditation. It's only 10 minutes. And we'll see you tomorrow. willingly give and graciously receive so i just want you to close your eyes now i want you to listen to me you're going to be totally relaxed totally relaxed just sit and relax let yourself relax you're going to totally relax totally let your body relax you're going to stay awake you're not going to go to sleep and you're going to be totally relaxed you're going to listen to every word i say you just listen to my voice you listen nothing but my voice you only hear my voice your body is going to remain exactly as it is you're not going to go to sleep. You're going to be consciously aware of everything I say. It's going to be very clear in your mind, just as the chair under you is clear in your mind. You hear my voice. You hear nothing but my voice. All right? Everything I say is energy that's flowing from me and it's flowing through you. We make a very strong connection. I want you to imagine your whole body moving into a very relaxed state. You're not going to go to sleep. You'll remain upright on your chair, but your body is becoming lighter and lighter. Your whole being is totally relaxed, totally relaxed. I just want you to hear my voice. You hear nothing but my voice. You're letting everything I'm saying flow right into your consciousness. It is the most magnificent feeling. You actually feel the energy flowing into your consciousness. You're so totally relaxed. It's flowing to and through you. I'm going to count from five down to one. Each time I count a number, you're going to let yourself sink deeper and deeper into a relaxed state. You hear every word I'm saying. You hear everything I'm saying. And you're totally relaxed. Totally relaxed. Each time I go down one number, you find your body becoming more and more relaxed. You're totally relaxed. We're going down now from five to four to three, and you're sinking deeper and deeper into a relaxed state. You feel so good. Now we're going down to three to two to one. And you're so relaxed. You're so totally relaxed. This is a wonderful feeling. I mean, you only hear my voice. You hear nothing but my voice. And you and I are going to step on an elevator. And this elevator is going to go down. It's going down. We're on the 10th floor. We're going down to the first floor. Each time we go down a floor, your body becomes more and more relaxed. We're going down from 10 to 9, 8, 7. You're becoming more and more relaxed. Your body's lighter, lighter, and lighter. You only hear my voice. You hear nothing but my voice. You're totally relaxed. We're going down now. 6 to 5 to 4 to 3. You are so relaxed two and one and you're totally relaxed as the elevator doors open you're going to step into your room of images this is like a celestial place it is the most beautiful room you have ever been in there's nothing like it absolutely nothing like it everything is just phenomenal the doors open and now you step into your room of images this is where you go when you want to be good to you. Now you're finding yourself in a very relaxed place. You're laying down and you're totally relaxed, totally relaxed. 
totally relaxed. You just hear my voice. You hear nothing but my voice. You can actually feel the energy flowing into your being and your body's becoming more and more relaxed, more and more relaxed. Now, as I put my hands on your shoulder, you're gonna feel a charge of energy that is unreal. It's gonna move into your body. Every molecule in your body is gonna become strong and healthy and alert. The second I put my hands on you, you're gonna feel the energy, just like a rush of energy. It's moving into every cell of your being and your body is becoming stronger and healthier and more relaxed. There, just feel that. Feel that energy flowing into you. It's such a beautiful energy and it's charging every cell in your being. You have a feeling now of health. There's a dynamic that you're feeling that you have never experienced. You're seeing now that you're going to move into a place of prosperity where money will never be a problem. It's just going to keep fixing itself. and going to keep getting better until you are in a marvelous financial situation. It's so good. And your body's becoming healthier and healthier, stronger and stronger. And you're totally relaxed, totally relaxed. You just hear my voice. This beautiful energy is flowing to and through you. And understand every word I'm saying is recorded in your brain. And in a millisecond, you can go back into this magnificent state that you experience right now. You could do it on a crowded subway. You're in charge of you. You are controlling the vibration of the body. Your body is moving into a healthier, more dynamic, more powerful vibration and you're staying in it constantly. I'm going to put a coin in your hand and you're going to make certain that coin is with you wherever you go. One side is E. That's the environment. That's thinking the way all people think about almost all things. The other side is the G. And that's where you're working in harmony with God's laws. That's the power for everything there ever was or ever will be. It's flowing to and through you, and it'll give you everything you ask for. You're so totally relaxed, totally relaxed. It's a magnificent feeling you're experiencing. You're so totally relaxed, totally relaxed, totally relaxed. I'm gonna put this under your palm on your right hand and you're going to feel that, and there's a feeling come with it. The G is pressing against your hand. Understand, that is a physical instrument that represents an infinite power. That's the Spirit of God flowing to and through you, and it will give you whatever you ask for. It will keep you in an absolutely magnificent, healthy vibration. It will keep you in such a prosperous vibration that your financial situation will continually improve day in, day out. It will keep you in such a wonderful vibration that you will find yourself surrounded by people who are good people, they care, and their friendships like you have never heard of. This is such a magnificent vibration. You attract all things to you that are good. You're in that vibration now. You have let yourself go there. Everything I'm saying is programmed deep into your marvelous mind. Let yourself experience this deep, meaningful feel of gratitude. You're totally relaxed. I'm gonna count from one to 10. Each time I count a number, you're gonna move up. You're gonna feel like there's phenomenal charges of energy flowing to and through you. They're just enormous charges of energy. On the count of 10, you're gonna open your eyes, you're gonna have a smile on your face, you're gonna feel like you've had a wonderful rest. Each time I count a number from one to 10, new energy will flow into you. It's the most magnificent experience in everything I've said, everything that is programmed into your mind, it's in cells in your brain, it's there at will. 
Understand a body cannot be ill in a healthy vibration. Understand a person cannot be poor in a prosperous vibration. Understand a person cannot be alone and lonely when they're in a gregarious, loving relationships vibration. Everything in your life is going to get better for you. Every, every aspect of it. There's nothing that you could touch that isn't going to improve. Everything's going to improve because you've got that touch. You've got the magic. You're going to do things you never dreamt of. You're so relaxed. It's so powerful. So powerful. So powerful. Coming up from one, two, three. You're feeling new energy flow into you. It's just coming in from every section of your being, every spot in your body. We're up to four and five. It's a phenomenal energy. You can feel it. It's just lifting you to a higher level. You're up to six, to seven, to eight. There's a phenomenal power moving into you. It's a feeling like you've never experienced. On the count of ten, you're going to open your eyes as if. Feel like you've had a wonderful rest. We're at seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, just relax and let yourself be aware of what we've been doing. We're asking. Ask and you'll receive. What? Whatever you ask for. You ask in the form of thought. Don't ask, talk, or think about anything you don't want. Just ask, think, and receive graciously. Receive everything you want. The trick is willingly give and graciously receive every aspect of your life. Now, I want you to listen to this often. I want you to listen to it often. I want you to listen to it and understand this is being directed with and through you, and it's going to keep getting stronger, and you're going to live healthier, happier, more fulfilled lives. You're totally relaxed. Totally relaxed. I'm going to suggest you listen to this every day. Totally relaxed. I hope you enjoyed this video. We put a lot of good information up here, and it causes everything in your life to get better. If you'd like us to notify you every time we put a new video up, hit subscribe and then turn on notification. Check out all our videos, and we will notify you when we put a new one up. to the unknown has time passed you by we're waiting for perfection there will never be the right time for anything you already have what you need take the step you always are talking about Trust yourself to take the chance you dream about Now is the time Today is what you've been waiting for Don't close your eyes If you stay here, how will you ever grow? I know it's hard To break free from it all But now is the time to start A leap of faith doesn't have to be sublime. 
Trust yourself to take the chance you dream about